not a coward. I'll still be here, still be doing uh, uh, what I'm doing. Now, let's get to the topic of the day, sanctions. This is our belief as MTCT and our policy is that sanctions must go uh, without any conditions. They have to go. Uh, <clears throat> and I think every patriotic Zimbabwean will agree with me and will agree with us that sanctions just have to go. They are responsible in some measure for the suffering of our people. They actually don't hurt the fat cats, which they presumably are supposed to hurt. They are hurting the poor, the poor of the poorest. And I can make an example. I've got many examples of this. So sanctions are, are undesirable. They do not help our country. Maybe let me illustrate it to you this way. I did an article, I think, last week for is it the Herald or the Chronicle, but one of those papers, they called me. And I made a case against sanctions. And somebody contacted me from the UK. I was like, what are you doing? Someone like you supporting Zan. I said, what do you mean I'm supporting Zan? Let those Zanu people suffer with those sanctions. Then they can be out of power. I said, no Zanu person is suffering because of sanctions. Sanctions don't choose and say, are you Zanu? You're not Zanu. If anything, Zanu people, because they are connected, they are not suffering because of sanctions. But you and me who are not connected, who does not have capacity uh, or, or opportunity to go around sanctions, uh, it's you and me who are suffering. Uh, so you would know that um, because of sanctions, uh, we can only borrow at a very punitive rate as a country. And uh, when government cannot get uh, credit lines at reasonable rates, it's you and me that can't get credit lines at reasonable rates because the government is acting on our behalf. So with those sanctions we are getting, borrowing at very punitive rates, there are no corresponding banks because of sanctions. So basically what that means is that um, uh, you find that there's no corresponding bank at, uh, at an international level. You go to China, there's no corresponding bank. So therefore you can't use your card even when you get there. This is just as a way of example. So you will find maybe one or two, but you, you, you because of sanctions, but you, you, you just need to be like other countries that you can basically go anywhere in the world and your bank card is working and everything. We also can't borrow from multinational, uh, <clears throat> multilateral institutions like the IMF and the World Bank, because every time when we try and borrow, or European investment, every time when we try and borrow, and then the USA will veto. They will veto using Zidera and saying, no, you can't uh, uh, borrow Zimbabwe. Uh, because they're under sanctions, those uh, Zitera sanctions. Uh, and uh, at the same time, having said that, we also urge the government to address the issues behind the sanctions. You know, you know there was that uh, violent uh, land reform. And to their credit, I think they're doing something about it, as you know, that they struck a deal with the former farmers, how they're going to compensate them. And I was impressed to hear the president of the country saying money is not going to come from Zimbabwe, it's going to come from Europe. And, and the very same farms must be able to, to then be able to produce uh, and then be able to, <clears throat> to, to, to feed the nation. So issues like election violence, and again, to their credit, there was no violence in the 2018 elections, at least leading up to it and even uh, during the elections. Uh, there was some um, violence after the elections and I think uh, they need to address the Moslante Commission recommendations. But it's those things, again, that brought about the, 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 the sanctions. And the general breakdown of the rule of law, um, I was talking to a, a diplomat who says uh, one of their uh, 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 investors came to this country. There were people who were trespassing in their property, uh, business property. They went to court, they got a court order, but the police could not enforce that. And so it's those type of things which speak to the rule of law. Uh, I think I think there's a promise to that effect that the government is working to reform the Second Republic as the president calls it. But overall, even without these things, I think the sanctions, or rather we think that the sanctions is they've outlived their, their usefulness and they just have to go. 
they are a blunt tool. They are not achieving what they were set out to do. Okay, Mr. Pugeni, I think everyone has understood what you said. The official position of the MDCT is that sanctions must go unconditionally. But we all know that this is not the position of the United States of America. The United States, yesterday, the embassy in Harare, they tweeted quite a number of times, and they raised about three points to do with um, the military, human rights abuses, and corruption. What is your position as MDCT? Should the government of Zimbabwe address these things first, or should the sanctions just be lifted? I've just told you that they must be lifted unconditionally. Uh, I think it's presumptuous of the United States of America really to raise uh, issues in the manner they are raising them in justifying these inhumane sanctions. I, I think it's really presumptuous and uh, it's, um, it's in bad test. I don't need to remind people of what happened to George Floyd. We saw a man being killed like a chicken, basically lose his life in front of the whole world with a white man putting his knee on his neck. So they are the last people to address issues of human rights, in other words, government official, uh, abusing their power uh, against the unarmed citizens. You, there is no better example than what we saw. So the justification, uh, really, it's, um, it's ill-advised and it's in bad test. OK, so you are saying that the military in Zimbabwe should continue in its position in politics? No, 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 no. I never say that. I say it. Sanctions have to go. They are not affecting the military. You will have to show me that because of sanctions, therefore the military's behavior has changed. It has not changed over the years. So which means these sanctions are doing something but what they are purportedly uh, uh, supposed to do. Okay. Now on my screen, I have put a tweet by Melan Robinson. She's the UK ambassador to Zimbabwe. She says, what needs to be said is it's not sanctions. It's corruption that drives away investors, leaves teachers, doctors, nurses, and services struggling. Sanctions don't hurt ordinary citizens. Zimbabweans must be free to expose corruption, rights abuses, and see perpetrators face justice. This was treated today at 11.47. What is your opinion on this uh, comment? Because the UK is, I think, we're, we're the first people to raise the issues that led to sanctions in Zimbabwe? No, to their credit, uh, there are no sanctions uh, in Zimbabwe from the UK. Uh, there are also no sanctions from the EU. I think the only sanctions they have are military-related industries. So I think the EU has some moral high ground. And, 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 and not some moral, the qualification, some moral high ground, including the UK. But to your tweet, the question mm -hmm. will be, what is then there for the use of sanctions? Okay, but they've just explained. If you look at the, the sanctions, first of all, they want behavior change from the government of Zimbabwe. If the government of Zimbabwe changes its behavior, starts acting. There's a number of things that needs to be done. For example, they, they want the military out of politics. They want free and fair elections. They want people that have disappeared, like Itai Zamara, to be found or, to, or a proper investigations to be carried out. They want corruption or, or the, a monetary policy at the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe to reflect proper financial management they want uh, people to stop stealing uh, the people who are in government willy-nilly and destroying the economy. These things cannot just be taken as wishful thinking or as minor issues. 
what is your position as an opposition party to this kind of issues? Kambakwe, you must never uh, be given this uh, false choice. It's a false choice that uh, you will either have sanctions lifted or this must go. It's a false choice. Let me give you a practical example. The president of the United States of America, he hired a guy with a simple mandate, go and destroy the post office because there are postal votes and he doesn't want those postal votes to be counted. He doesn't want the postal votes to make it uh, in this election. They must not be counted. When we know that the postal votes are what stands between, uh, or rather the postal votes will be what will allow Americans to exercise their democratic right to vote and still remain alive. He wants them to go in the face of a pandemic to go and vote there. And so he wants them to choose between voting and dying. Which country said we're imposing sanctions? The guy got there, he dismantled machines which were put there so that they can process, they can process these envelopes or these uh, postal uh, letters very quickly. And that was done deliberate to make sure that you disrupt the election and make sure that uh, those votes could not be counted. That cannot be fair. So if we are talking about a free and a fair election, maybe we should not be lectured by those who are doing everything to make sure that their own people do not get a fair shot or do not get to say their voice. Now, I'm not saying our elections are perfect, especially the 2018 one. It was not 100% perfect. But everyone was invited here. Whichever country or grouping of countries that wanted to come and observe, they were allowed here. These were the most violent free elections in the history of Zimbabwe. Almost zero violence. So when you are saying you are imposing sanctions on us so that uh, elections are free and fair, what are you talking about? Are you supporting the illusion of, uh, of 2.6 million? Because I, I really, I, I, what basis, what basis are we having this conversation of saying, we're going to sanction the people of Zimbabwe until they're free and fair elections? Which elections were, 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 were judged not to be, to be free? Okay. So, Mr. Pugin, I'm hearing your argument, but I think we need to address the issues that are being raised by the people who put the sanctions. If you are not happy with what they're doing in the United States, and you put sanctions on the United States, they won't feel it. If Zimbabwe today was to put sanctions on the United States, because George, uh, because um, someone was sent by Trump to damage the post office, America won't complain. We are complaining because America is has effect on Zimbabwe. So if they are raising this issue, so let me go back to the tweet. I, I think you can see them on the screen. So no, let's getting, go to... I'm getting old, Kambakwe. This is too small. I'm, I'm using a cell phone. But here is a point. You are making my point. What America is doing is they are just being bullies. That's what they are doing. They are using their hegemony, by the way, to basically make sure that we don't get a fair shot. They are abusing their position. That's what we're but, dealing with here. We're dealing with an abuse of a position. And so you cannot lecture me and say, and you sit here and try and make an argument for America. Because I say to you, they need to tell me that what was wrong about the 2018 election that invited uh, uh, sanctions on us. Okay, can I, can I give you what was wrong with that election? Yes. Firstly, up to today, we don't know the exact number of the presidential elections. We don't know how many votes Idim Nangaba got. We don't know how many votes Chamisa got. Zek has not published the final numbers in that election. They kept changing the numbers. No, and that number lie. was not... No, that is a, a fact. That is a no, fact. It's not a it's not a fact. It's not a fact, Kamara. I can actually cook. If you want me, if you want, I can Google it for you now. Right now, I can. Basically, I am live fact checking you. You are lying. 
Okay, right. Let's let's pass that point. I admit it. Now let's Thank go you. to the issue of the army being involved in, 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 in at ZEC. There are many officers of the military at ZEC who are currently serving as either commissioners or administrators at ZEC. The army was also involved in the transportation of ballots during that election. And these issues were raised in court, at the, at the Constitutional Court or, or during the petition. I'm not sorry, I'm not sure which court was it, Supreme Court or Constitutional, but these issues were raised. Okay. You see, this is very important, Kabangu. If you are going to make an argument, you must make a coherent argument. Don't just make an argument because you've had uh, the alliance or some people making an argument. What is wrong with the... What was the point you want to make? I don't think you want to make a point that uh, it's wrong for certain people to transport ballots. I think the point you want to make is that certain people tamper with the ballots. Right? If that's the point you are making, you'll get my support. But you can't say to me, uh, uh, because they are the ones who are transporting the ballots, then therefore there is a problem. That, that, that type of logic will be wrong. So you need to point a wrong and say, this is the wrong which they did. And I'm careful again to, 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 to make this disclaimer. I am not saying it happened because I do not know. And uh, I am not saying uh, it didn't happen because I also do not know. But I am saying the best way to, 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 to fix the elections in Zimbabwe is exactly as it happened in 2008. You count the ballots, right? You count the ballots per polling station and you stick the totals outside. And let me make a case for you, which the Alliance has not been making, which no one has been making. The problem with ZEC, uh, and if you want to know what is our problem with ZEC, the problem with ZEC is that ZEC counts the votes, which is wrong. Because who is to say those ZEC people do not support Part A or Part B? Why don't you let the election agents of the contestants count the ballots supervised by ZEC, rather mm -hmm. than have ZEC officials who in, an, in any instant could be associated to party A or party B doing the counting and our people are just seated there from a, from a distance looking. But if it's us who are counting our own ballots as contestants, like it's happening in South Africa, in South Africa after an election, the election agents, they gather around the table and they look at the ballot and they give each other, this ballot is for NC, this one is for TA, this one is for EFF, and everyone can see there, and the IEC is supervising that process. You won't have problems. Because in many instances, some of those uh, ballots which are counted at around 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. to 4 a.m., most of those agents are already sleeping. And who knows what those ZEC people are doing? Now, if you are making that argument, I'll understand. But if you are saying the, 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 the ballots were counted and the counting was fine, after you have agreed, and then you put them in whichever, it doesn't matter from that point, whoever transports them. Okay. I think the, the point that I'm trying to make is that these issues that the United States is raising are not issues that you can just dismiss. Something needs to be done from the side of the Zimbabwe government so that the United States can see that there has been change and then they lift the sanctions. And they've set these conditions which are openly available. But instead of addressing them, the government keeps saying the sanctions must be lifted unconditionally, which you're also saying now. Yes, I'm saying to you, it's a false choice and don't fall into that narrative. I'm refusing to debate based on how they framed the debate. That's what I'm doing. I'm refusing to debate based on how they framed the debate. They can't say, have this. Uh, or, or this. That's what I'm saying. I'm simply saying you can still hold this government accountable by other means, which will indeed give you the results. Because I've said to you, sanctions have been here for how long? 
What have they achieved? That's what I'm asking you. So you can't keep doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting a different outcome. That's the definition of insanity. So if you have had sanctions here, and you are saying the sanctions are to force behavior change from government, and you are not getting that behavior change, but what you are getting is a poverty, desperate poverty of ordinary men on the streets. I, I, I mean, really, where is logic in that? Where is humanity? Where is sense in that? Okay, so we have talked about the elections. Now let's go to corruption at the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. Corruption at the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe has caused Zimbabwe to have no cash through the Command Agriculture Program. Are you aware that the Command Agriculture Program cost over three billion US dollars over the past three or so years? Now, you see, there you are at least talking because some of us, like we, this is our argument, we are saying sanctions play a certain part in destroying our economy. We are not blaming sanctions 100% for the collapse of our economy. We are not blaming them 100%. But we are saying they play a part. And also the things like uh, this, um, this corruption at command agriculture you are talking about. Also some of the things that are playing a part. And I said it here, that government they have to address issues that brought about these sanctions. I said it. You see, it's those type of things, the corruption at, um, or let me put it to you, this alleged corruption at this command agriculture, because until you take these things to a competent court of law, it still remains alleged. And that is my problem, is that Zimbabweans, they are just good at talking and complaining. Think of how many lawyers we have in, in, in our East Wild, uh, 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 Friends organization. Why can't they show that by taking a, 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 some of these uh, a, a, a corrupt deals to the court of law and come up with a good judgment? But what do they do? Every time when somebody takes these people uh, uh, to court for this same corruption, it's the same East Wild comrades that defend them. And then you wonder, what is this corruption that they've been mourning about? Because when we are trying to take these people to court for the very same corruption, what do they do? They defend them and abuse the whole legal system to make sure that they never uh, face justice. Okay. I, I get your point. You're saying the MDC alliance should take the government of Zimbabwe to court over the issue of corruption at the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. But I think Tendai BT at least they have capacity. At least they have capacity, you see, because it's a gathering of lawyers, right? So can they please put their money where their mouths are? They're saying they are anti-corruption, which is great, good. Now, with that clap of lawyers, why can't you take all of these things you are talking about to court? They, they've done so. Tendai Biti was leading a portfolio committee and they tried to call some of the people, like Tabure, to parliament. But they have been blocked. And Tabure has never came to parliament to answer questions regarding this uh, corruption in command agriculture. Sakunda has been mentioned in many reports for corruption to do with uh, command agriculture. And this is the reason why the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe cannot put cash in ATMs in Zimbabwe not the United States sanctions. And as the opposition now, you are the biggest opposition in Zimbabwe. Why don't you take Idim Nangagwa's government to court for these kind of issues, failing to come up and attend uh, hearings uh, of the portfolio committees in parliament? Okay, L let's address one thing. I said to you, why don't they use the capital and the resources which they have in their, in their lawyers' club? And you said to me, they have. And then I was listening uh, to hear that evidence. And then you say, he chairs a portfolio committee. It's called this or so. No, that's not a court. A portfolio committee, that's not a court. And uh, to the extent that there are no remedies for people who abscond court, then we must fix that. But I know that in other jurisdictions, 
if you don't come to parliament when you are called upon, there is something that parliament can do to compel you to come and appear. So, uh, you know, I've just joined parliament in less than a month now. So it's something that uh, the contribution which you are requiring from me, I think it's premature. As time goes on, you can really say to me, why don't you do A, B, C, D? I'm still learning a course. Okay. Now let's go to the issue of the 1st August shootings. There was a Monsanto commission which put recommendations, including investigations, finding the people who are responsible and making them responsible and punishing them and also paying compensation to people whose families, the, the victims' families. As we speak, Idim Nangaba has not acted on the Monsanto Commission report and I think it's almost two years. What is stopping him from acting on those reports? I don't know. That is why you need to call... Uh, Minister Mayor Monica Mutsuaka here and find out why that is not happening. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, we will use some of us, the platform that has been given to us in Parliament to ask those type of questions. I agree with you. I did speak about the Mutlande report in, the, in my opening when I said those are some of the things that Zimbabwean government has to address. They have to address and implement that Mutlande uh, uh, Commission uh, 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 recommendations. After all, they are the ones. They are the ones who set up that commission. Okay, but then after what you've just said on corruption, on the Monsanto Commission, and on the shootings, which have not been investigated, can the United States then just unconditionally lift these sanctions? Yeah, you, you keep framing this in a manner that I'm saying. Uh, don't frame it like that. Don't give us a false choice. It's a false choice. It's not this or that. I am simply saying to you, these sanctions have no capacity to regulate behavior. I think that is proven over the years, and I'm expecting you to take judicial notice of that. And even the United States, they obviously know that. That these sanctions do not have capacity to influence that behavior change, which they are saying they brought the sanctions for. And then, therefore, I'm saying... So remove the sanctions because they have impact, but they have impact on the wrong people, and that impact is dire and extremely negative. Try another tool to regulate behavior as far as the government is concerned. But to say to me that it sanctions or this, it, it, the, the, the whole characterization is wrong, and don't limit me into that. Ah, but it's not me who is limiting you. This is what the United States is saying. It's not me. It's not. It's real on this tweet that you are looking at right now. The United States who put the sanctions have said how they, what they want you to do as the government. You, you guys are in government. You are in parliament. You are in councils. So you are part of the government. They are saying they need certain actions to be taken. Otherwise, they won't lift the sanctions. No, they are being unreasonable and imperialist. Okay. They are being unreasonable and, and imperial. No, no, no. Come back, please. Look at it this way. There is no point, really, why Zimbabwe should continue to suffer. And you tell us that we are not going to lift sanctions. When you realize that the sanctions basically have no effect, are inconsequential. They are not able to inform behavior or influence behavior on the part of government, Right. And the sanctions are not affecting government. The sanctions are affecting ordinary people. So, honestly speaking, I'm surprised that you are not even joining uh, whatever efforts the government is doing as media personalities to really expose this cruelty. From but these, uh, the, the government powers. is just using people as human shields. Well, that's what they are basically so, saying. So, so. No, no, no. I didn't say the government is using people as human shields. I'm actually saying these, these, these governments that keep on imposing sanctions that are making life difficult for the ordinary folk, they are using the government as a scapegoat to keep up with these very inhumane policies towards Zimbabwe. Okay. Let's go to an easy one then. 
Itai Zamara. In yeah. these sanctions, one of the conditions is that people who have disappeared, like Itai Zamara, there must be a proper investigation and the perpetrators should be found. What is stopping Idim Nangagwa's government from properly investigating, producing the people who abducted him, and reporting where the remains of Itai Zamara are? Well, you will have to call uh, Minister May Monica Mutsuaka. She is uh, in a better position to enlighten you on that. Or you may want to call Nelson Chamisa. It's possible that uh, Mugabe might have told him a, a thing or two because he let us say it is a great icon, is what, what he, he gave him, you know, he showered him with so much uh, praises. Uh, what I know about Mugabe is that he was a blood, he was a blood thirsty, um, a, 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 a cold matter. That's what I know about him. Okay, so now let's go to the recent abductions. The one which is uh, being asked about here, I think let's go to Michael Mpofu. He says, ask him about Tawanda, the, the young journalist who was abducted using Impala rental cars. Do yeah, you think okay. this behavior? You, you will have to call Minister May, uh, Monica Mutwaka. She's the one who speaks for the government. I don't speak for the government. Now, but, if but, you want but to... you're saying unconditionally. Yeah, you're saying, saying lift sanctions unconditionally, but you can't answer yeah. for the government. Yeah, because let, let me tell you why I'm saying that. Because sanctions don't affect government. They affect the ordinary folk on the street. I told you, you know about the GoFundMe account, which, which you were very instrumental in saying to me, set it up. You are the one who said to me, set up a GoFundMe so that people don't send funds to you. And you and thank you so much. You helped me. You said as a politician, don't be touching money. And I was very uh, uh, grateful for, for that. That GoFundMe, that young lady could not open the account because her country is under sanctions. She could but I also it. can't open a GoFundMe in South Africa. So that is neither here nor there. If I'm in South Africa, GoFundMe is not the United States government. What I'm saying is the United States government has asked for things to be done. And as an opposition party, I expect the MDCT to agree that the government of Zimbabwe must act instead of saying lift sanctions unconditionally. Ah, unfortunately, you are not listening. You are listening selective. I did say sanctions must go unconditionally. But I also went down and I said, the government has to address issues that brought about these sanctions. What is the difference? The difference is that I did not say before the sanctions are lifted, government must do A, B, C, T. No. Because why am I not, why am I not saying a, 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 it's, a, it's a, a quick, it's a tit for tat or do this for, for that? Uh, it's because I realize that there is no relationship between sanctions and the behavior of government. So why insist on punishing the innocent if your intentions are good, if you are a Western government, than finding another solution of moderating behavior? Okay. Like which, behavior, which way? Well, I do not know uh, but maybe you want to be able to make sure that um, you empower the very same people you are disempowering through these sanctions. Because as I've said before, on this very same platform, as long as the people of Zimbabwe are suffering in the manner they are doing, you are not going to break the hegemon of ZANU. Because in, in the main, they are voted by the poor. It's the meek class that can change a government. Look at the hegemon of the ANC. The more they produce the meek class in South Africa, the more parties like DA and other parties got support. So if you are going to break the hegemon of ZANU in this country, you have to create a meek class. It is the one that will break that hegemon. But as long as the majority of, of us are poor like this, 
uh, largely to these sanctions because there's nothing that can happen in this country. Even for things like roads and dams and whatsoever, the government have to self-fund those things because, like I've already told you, the multilateral uh, uh, organizations like the IMF and the World Bank, we can't get anything out of that. So the majority will remain poor and the hegemon of Zanu are not going to be able to break it. So you are on an emotional trip just being angry and just screaming, let those sanctions stay until the government change. Nothing is going to have happen. What you are simply doing is you are cutting your noise to spike your face and you think it's fun. It's not fun. Okay. Mr. Pogan, I'm, I'm almost at a point where I'm not satisfied with the policy of the MDCT on this issue. And you know I'm very honest when I, I talk to you about some of these things. People here are saying you are not challenging Zanopia when it comes to this issue as an opposing party with the biggest number of MPs, councillors, senators. You are, you are not challenging ZANU-PF enough to do what they need to do so that I'm these sanctions you, can be lifted. I'm saying to you, when there was the arrest of uh, Jacob Ngarivu and the Hopewell, do you know who submitted questions to the minister? It is us, the MTCT. It is Honorable Monzo who said, tell me the coincidence of these guys exposing corruption the next thing they are arrested. Now, and, and, and again, he said, I, I, I think he said, corruption linked at the highest level of our government. Now, I appreciate that we are not grandstanding like others. We are going about our business in the most professional manner possible. You want us to grandstand and just make noise, but at the end of the day with nothing. Too much noise, too much thunder. Show me what have you achieved. Nothing. 2.6 million, this and that. What have you... People don't eat this. Okay. I, I'm very sorry. I think we have lost Mr. Kalipani Pugeni. Uh, I'll just give him a second or two to join because I think there, there is an important point that we need to, to make with regards to whether the Zimbabwe government is doing enough to get the sanctions lifted or they don't understand what needs to be done. I, I know that we all love our country, so we don't want people to suffer. So Pugin is making a key point that people should not be made to suffer to make a point. But I also think as an opposition, they've got a certain type of action that they need to take to bring to attention of SANU-PF, who are the ruling party, that just saying remove sanctions is not enough. So I'm going to wait for Mr. Pugin to rejoin. I'm going to play a little song for a while. And then if he doesn't join, I'll come back and we'll close this. Maybe we can continue tomorrow. And I also want to mention that um, tomorrow morning, there's going to be a match from Lofta Stadium here in South Africa to the United States Embassy in Pretoria. And I'm going to be having my team there so that we can hear the speeches and we can get to hear what the people who are marching are saying. We're going to also try to talk to members of the, of the groups that will be marching there to say what do they expect the United States to do when they've set conditions. Should they just drop their conditions? And then what happens then? How will Zanpia react if the sanctions are gone? So as Zimbabweans, we love our country. We need to ask those questions. And this is what I've been doing to Mr. Pugin. So let me play this song for a while and see if Mr. Pugin is going to come back. Come back with media. Come back with media. Come back with media. Rocking now.